almighty and ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved my song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with bears and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard in and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. chief priests and the elders of the people. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it. He dug a wine press in it and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir, come, let us kill him and get his entire inheritance. So they seized him and threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read the scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it's amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruit of the kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Christ. Well, the fall colors are certainly changing, aren't they? We have some beautiful, beautiful leaves out there. And uh, of course, with the weather report this weekend, that dirty four-letter word coming down from the north, snow. Made me wonder what's going on. Um, and of course, the uh, NHL is starting on October 10th. And it's kind of crazy because I was wearing shorts on Friday. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, what is happening? Um, but you know, it made me wonder thinking about the Maple Leafs, you know. I wonder why the fans are so loyal to the Maple Leafs. Kind of an interesting question. And then, of course, I was thinking about the loyalty, our loyalty to the Lord, in good times and in hard times. There's a question that's always haunted me. And the question is, if you were arrested for being Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? 
do we lose hope when life throws a curve at us? Jesus says, follow me. And this kind of demands loyalty, faith, trust, letting go, and enthusiasm. And living is never easy, and life is what happens when I'm making other plans. It never kind of works out the way I expect it to. But Christianity, we can't really claim to be Christians if we don't have a sensitivity to others, especially the poor. It would be like having a love relationship with uh, la lacking compassion, tenderness, mercy, forgiveness. Thomas Merton says it like this, with all the simplicity. He says, we're not at peace with ourselves because we're not at peace with others. And we're not at peace with others because we're not at peace with God. It's kind of a struggle in life, isn't it, eh? We're told to love God and love our neighbor. Well, do we owe our neighbor anything? Hmm. Have people really done that much for us? That we owe them something? Well, I thought this was uh, an interesting little thing to reflect upon. An American soldier was wounded in a battlefield in the Far East, and he owes his life to a Japanese scientist, Kitaseko, who isolated the bacteria in tetanus. A Russian soldier was saved by a blood transfusion, which is indebted to Landsteiner, a uh, Austrian. A German is shielded from typhoid fever because of the help of a Russian, Mechnikov. A Dutch Marine in the East Indies is protected from Malaysia because of the experiments of an Italian. While a British Navy aviator in North Africa escaped from death from surgery, uh, surgical infections from a Frenchman, Pasteur, and a German, Nock, who developed new techniques. In peace and in war, we are benefit beneficiaries of the knowledge contributed by every nation around the world. Our children are God guarded from diphtheria because of a Japanese and a German scientist. They are protected from smallpox because of an Englishman. They are protected from rabies because of a Frenchman. They are cured from pellagra because of the research of an Austrian. From birth to death, we are surrounded by invisible hosts of people who never thought in terms of flags or boundaries, lines or countries, but who served no lesser loyalty to the welfare of all humanity. Are we grateful? You know, so many people worked in the medical profession. And you know, in the 1900s, the average age was 48. Boy, we've come a long way since 1900. There's another story which you might find interesting, it's got an interesting twist to it. It's a story about a poor Spanish farmer named Fleming. And Fleming, one day when he was out working in the field, he heard a boy crying in a nearby bog. He dropped his tools, he ran to this bog, and he found this boy kind of up to his waist in muck. And he was terrified, screaming, and struggling to get free. And Fleming saved this lad from what would have been a slow, excruciating death and a terrifying one in the quicksand. Then the next day, a fancy carriage pulled up to this Scotsman's spare surroundings. An elegantly dressed nobleman stepped up and introduced himself as the father of the boy that Fleming had saved. He says, I want to repay you. You saved my son. He says, no, no, I can't accept payment for that. It was just the right thing to do at the time. And the Scottish farmer was waving it all off. At that moment, the farmer's son came in the door, into this little hollow. He said, is this your son? And he said, yes. He said, I'll make you a deal. Let me provide him with the level of education my own son will enjoy. If the lad is anything like his father, he will no doubt grow to be a man we're both proud of. 
And Fleming agreed to that. And his son attended the best schools and graduated from St. Mary's Hospital Medical School in London. And he went on to become the world know, uh, noted Sir Alexander Fleming. And he was the one who brought penicillin to England. After, years after, the same nobleman's son, who was saved from the bog, was stricken with pneumonia, and of course saved again by Fleming with penicillin. The name of the nobleman was Lord Randolph Churchill, and his son's name was Sir Winston Churchill. We never know what our little acts of generosity, our little acts of goodness, do to our world. It's amazing the things that change our world. And gratitude is that thing that draws us into being grateful and finding a way to be helpful to others. Pope Francis has a, a wonderful, beautiful quote. He says, rivers do not drink from their own water, and trees do not eat their own fruit. And the sun does not shine on itself, and flowers do not spread their fragrance for themselves. Living for others is a rule of nature. We're all born to help each other, no matter how difficult it is. Life is good when you're happy, but life is much better when others are happy because of you. God's blessed us with so many things, and he asks us to share them with one another. We all have the ability and the opportunity to cultivate gratitude. Simply take a moment to focus on all that you have, rather than complaining about all the things that you think you should have. And of course, that's one of the great struggles of our world. The advertisers are always telling you, you should have this, you should have this, you should have this, and they're trying to teach us to be unhappy with what we have. And it's a struggle because it's easy for us to do that. Developing an attitude of gratitude is one of the simplest ways to improve your satisfaction in life. And the following story gives insight into the drama of the Lord in the vineyard and his benevolent love that he gives to us. A little boy came up to his mother in the kitchen one evening while she was making supper, and he handed her a piece of paper. And this is what it said, for cutting the grass, five dollars. For cleaning up my room, one dog. For going to the store, for you, 50 cents. For babysitting my brother while we were out shopping, 25 cents. For taking out the garbage, a dollar. For getting a good report card, five dollars. For cleaning up my room and raking the yard, two dollars. Total owed, 1475. Well, of course, the mother looked at the piece of paper and she looked down at her son, who looked expectantly with his hand out, you know. She took the piece of paper and the pen, and she started writing. And this is what she wrote. For nine months I carried you, as you grew inside me, no charge. For all the nights I sat up with you, and doctored you, and prayed for you, no charge. For all the times, and all the tears, that you have caused through the years, no charge. For all the nights we're filled with dread and worry, I knew we're coming ahead, no charge. For all of the toys, the food, the clothing, and even wiping your nose, no charge. When her son finished reading what the mother had written, there was a big tear in his eye. Oh, sorry, I missed one line. And when you add it all up, the full cost of real love is no charge. So when he read the note, this big tear in his eyes, he looked straight up at his mother and he said, Mom, I surely do love you. And then he took the pen and the bill, turned it over, and wrote, paid in full. As we celebrate Thanksgiving this weekend, we are truly, truly blessed. We have so many things to be thankful for, and sometimes we just forget to be thankful for them. And I'm truly aware, don't get me wrong, of life's pain, life's sorrow, life's stress, 
life's hardship. The enemy of being grateful is thinking about what life is not. We must pray for the wisdom to be thankful for what life is and not miss out on the long list of people who love you. We are so loved by so many. We live in the second best country in the world. That's what the latest thing said. Second best country in the world to live in. I don't know about you, but occasionally I still complain. Oops. So we here at St. John's and St. Cornelius, we want to wish you a blessed and joyful Thanksgiving as you spend time with your family. And certainly send my best wishes and my blessing to them. Let us now stand God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We now bring our petitions before the Lord. For the Christian community, the vineyard of Christ, that it may produce the fruits of justice, peace, and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here, that the fruits of Christian living may be evident in our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in positions of leadership, that they may be faithful in carrying out their duties, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here, that we celebrate with thanksgiving the many gifts that the Lord has blessed us, with which enable us to respond to God's love by loving others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been victims of ingratitude and unjust treatment, that they may find healing and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all believers, that they may realize that life is a gift from God and use it wisely. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our sick relatives and friends, we pray for those names listed in our bulletin sick list. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our loved ones who have died, those who died this past week, and especially for all those who rest in our cemeteries, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the blessing of God on our own special needs and concerns, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as we look out to our world that is, of course, full of conflict and war, we pray by asking Our Lady, the Queen of Peace, to intercede, especially for those in Ukraine and the Middle East. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. God of love and your unfailing compassion, watch over your church. And since left to ourselves, we are prone to evil. By your grace, turn us away from all that is wrong and direct us in the way of what is right. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
sisters and brothers that this my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the over sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called the chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so, with all the angels and archangels, the thrones and dominions, we sing the hymn of glory as without end we declare. Welcome then 
into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
wait a second, I was in shorts on Friday, and now we're getting ready for Christmas. It's kind of, you know, but um, keep in mind that's in your bulletin for flyer, and it's available online. So I want to thank you all for being here, and certainly send a thank you to all your families, and thank you for being part of our family. It's an incredible gift. Um, and I just want to, uh, I always like to share a joke on the way out, so um, please uh, forgive me. The golfers aren't going to be very happy with this one. So uh, a man and his wife, they go to a dentist's office. And when they go to the dentist's office, the man says, listen, I'm in a big hurry. I've got two guys waiting on the car. we got a tee-off time at 10 o'clock at one of the best golf courses there is. And uh, it's almost 9.30. And we don't have time for freezing. I don't have time for wait for that other stuff to kick in. It's, we need the tooth taken out right now. And uh, of course, the, the dentist is going, what's going on? What do you mean? You know, you're going to play golf after you I pull a tent without any, you know, you know, freezing? Like, what's going on? And uh, he thinks he must be a very tough guy. And then, uh, of course, he said, well, which tooth is it? And he turned and says, will you open your mouth, dear, and show him? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> it's just a joke. <laughs> Have a blessed and glorious Thanksgiving. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, and so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And may the Lord also bless your families that are gathering on this Thanksgiving. And please send them my best. Go in the peace and love of Jesus Christ.